You're listening to Barbell Logic, brought to you by Barbell Logic Online Coaching, where each week we take a systematic walk through strength training and the refining power of voluntary hardship. Welcome to the Barbell Logic Podcast. I'm Scott Hambrick, and there's Matt Reynolds, and we've got the team Jason from and Tatiana. A7 here. Yes. Uh, yeah, from A7 and International. And we were we were just talking before we turned the mics on that he, Jason had ordered a Tesla, this Tesla El Camino. And, and I was like, so what was compelling <laughs> truck. about that thing for you? Why did you order that? I just think it's got uh, such an innovative design. And I think that um, the way that I try to look at the world is when people are really trying to push uh, something new that's great, it's always going to be um, offset, I guess, by the community and what they're thinking, but that's just the, I don't know. I, I guess the simple answer is I was really moved by the way that the design was shaped and the innovation and that it be a change to the truck industry. I like it. I like it too. <laughs> In the meanwhile, I bought a Ford F two fifty for about yeah, a you third did. of Scott, the price. Yeah. Scott just bought a, bought a farm. Actually dude, those things, those trucks start at 39. Yeah. It's not too bad. Uh, you know, I, I was looking at that and being from the background I'm from, I was like, oh, he's got all these uh, flat panels welded together because it's like one-tenth of the cost of actually like pounding out a contoured panel, you know, stamping right. them out. Yep. Uh, interesting. <laughs> so I wanted to have you guys on the show. You guys have been friends of the show for a while. Um, and and I think most of our listeners know we, we're real choosy about who we um, who we let advertise on the show. We we don't let new pe- new companies advertise on the show that we aren't already fans of. And so I was talking to you guys before um, we started recording that I've been using your A7, your bar grip shirts for, I think, like five years. How long have you guys been making the bar grip shirts? Yeah, so uh, we started back in, uh, this would have been right around the five-year mark, so it would have been December. Uh, 2015? December, yeah, just, well, December 2014 is when we actually started A7, and then we started launching products. Um, around the August of uh, 2015. Okay. Mark, yep. Would- yep. The first A7 product I saw was that shirt you had, Reynolds, and it had to be yeah. f- so, right had around be that time. F- close to five, four and a half years ago. Yeah. yeah. Um, I got lucky. I wasn't even looking for it. Um, I was on a I was on a website that that uh, a big a big uh, fitness equipment website, and I was like looking for shirts, just like normal T-shirts. And I was like, wait a minute, here's a T-shirt with rubber on the back. This is <laughs> awesome. Let's try. Let's get this. And of course, you know, and and the price has always been pretty good. Like the price actually is really not much more than just a normal T-shirt. It's and surprising. So, yeah, like it's actually too low. Should we talk, Scott? Should we start talking them into raising their prices yeah, a little it, bit? Yeah, it's it's eight to ten dollars too cheap. Is that is that bar grip stuff on the back of that shirt? Is that screen printed on there? So we've experimented with so many different ways of uh, doing this to the point that we actually set up our own factory. Um, in Pakistan, that's American owned, that handles all of our production. One of our friends from California actually has been out there for the last two years running it. Um, so to kind of break down the process, it is a screen printed process, um, but it's kind of uh, like 12 different membranes that we're kind of mixing together in a layering process um, that, yeah, it's really kind of complicated to explain it all. But all that to say, there's different variants of heat and uh, chemical applications that allow for the curing of it to achieve that optimal result, which we're kind of going for that tack feel. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, yeah. similar to those little toys that you used to get from the quarter machine as a kid that, you know, they'd stick to everything essentially. Yeah. You know, the, the thing that I still have that original shirt, by the way, Scott, and I've got, now I've got a bunch more shirts and I tend to wear those other ones, but, um, but even the shirt that I have, that's four and a half years old that, you know, that's been full of my, my Matt Reynolds bacon grease, uh, <laughs> back, back sweat and has been washed hundreds of times and for a long time, like when you buy a new shirt and you're sort of proud of it, you like I didn't dry it, I turned it inside out or whatever, and then I, you know, I'd wash it, and then I'd, I'd turn it back right, right side out, and then hang it to dry. But for like the past three years, I've just washed and dried it in an actual dryer. It's still pretty tacky four and a half years later. Now it's not as tacky as the brand new ones, but it it is held up surprisingly well for me wearing it and having a you know big knurled barbells on my back for the last for the last four and a half years. So so for, for people that don't know, you make a shirt um, that you call the bar grip shirt. 
And you make a lot of stuff now. Over the last couple of years, you've really you've, you've expanded beyond the bar grip shirt. But the bar grip shirt is the thing that people will know A7 by. And it's really just it's a shirt that has that's got this sort of screen print, printed rubberized material on the back of it. The the t shirt itself is just a, a well made. Is it? A, it's like a cotton poly blend or is it a cotton shirt? What cotton is cotton lycra? So you get the right okay. amount of stretch with the shell yep, of yep. the cough, cotton. It's a kind of shirt you would wear anyway if it wasn't covered in rubber on the back out to the coffee shop. But but this has got this has got this rubberized design on the back and, and you guys have all sorts of different designs you have and you also have at this point you've got t-shirts you've got tanks you've got women's crops you've got all kinds of both male and female styled shirts but it just really helps the bar stick to your back on the squats and then I really like it on bench press especially for clients uh, for my clients who train at at what I would call like a globo box gym that have very that have like slick bench presses. So if you if you're benching and they've got that like that real slick hard vinyl, it's not like a good rubberized marine vinyl the, like you. You're would. talking about the bench itself, like the, the crappy bench itself. Bench, yeah. yeah, when the bench itself is slick and you're going to slide down it, and you put on a normal shirt and you just whoop and you slide down that bench. Uh, a bar grip shirt fixes that for you. you. And we've seen people doing all kinds of crazy stuff. You know, they'll bring in yoga mats and try to and try to put yoga mats on their bench presses and and wrap them with like bands and stuff. You can just get a bar grip shirt and put a bar grip shirt on and then you don't need any of that stuff and you can lay down on a bench and stick to the bench. And so I, I love your shirts. That, that's I've been a huge fan for years. In my yeah, opinion. when we actually came up with the idea for Bar Grip, you know, I was uh, I was doing a, uh, a Lyle McDonald program that had me, it, had, it called for me to do like 20 reps of squats and everything like that. And uh, this this program just was beating me to death. And I was at a gym in Atlanta, um, which is incredibly, incredibly warm in July, which is when this was, or I'm sorry, in June when this was. And um, I, uh, I was on my third set with these 20 reps and the t-shirt and the chalk mixed was more like pudding than helping me with anything. And I actually had the bar roll down my back doing low bar squats and it tore my anconia. So for oh, wow. about, yeah, so for about three months, I couldn't even straighten my arm. I was in a sling and everything. And uh, I looked at it kind of as a blessing, uh, which is how I try to look at things when they hurt me is how can I overcome and how can I uh, become a little bit better through this? And that's really where the idea of bar group took off. And by the time that we got home that day, I turned to Tatiana and I said, I have something that I really think can help our community. And that's really where we've always tried to take our approach is we try to look at the community, understand what's going on in the community and opportunities that we can really help the community. And we try to look at it more from that side uh, than kind of a business model, if that makes sense. Because uh, we sure. know that if we're helping people, we're doing the right thing and it all kind of carry through. So you had started A7 even before the bar grip idea came out. It was A7 already. It was just a, like yeah. a fitness clothing brand before bar grip even was when a seven started, actually, it was really interesting. I, uh, um, the idea of a seven, um, the name I'll start there, uh, is actually the name of a band that I was part of in high school. Um, so we took the name a seven, what, what, what kind of music? Oh, rock all the way, man. Okay. Uh, just wide genre of rock. Um, okay. but, uh, yeah, a seven stands for approaching seven and uh, seven is generally looked at as kind of the perfect or the complete number. So um, with that said, it's always approaching perfection, approaching completion, the idea of always bettering yourself and the character therein. And when we started the idea of A7, um, it originally was called A7 Fitness, Health, and Nutrition. So a little bit more of a mouthful. Yeah, definitely. Uh, I used to work in uh, in corporate. I used to manage uh, high-rise condominiums. And I went to sit down with my boss one day. And she turned to me and she, she said, why are you doing this? And at first, I thought it was dismissive, like I'm not doing a good job. But she was basically encouraging me to explore more in my world and try to challenge myself more. And uh, fortunate for her, I just got done pulling a, uh, a deadlift PR that day. So the follow-up question she had was, if you could be doing anything with your, uh, with your life, but you couldn't be sitting around watching Netflix all day, what would you be doing and why aren't you doing it now? And uh, I think it was the first time somebody really believed in my power like that. And the next day, we started recording videos for YouTube uh, for A7. Um, and started a YouTube channel, and we saw really good growth with that initially. Um, and then through that process of just you know trying to grow a community of like-minded individuals that really wanted to structure themselves to become better, um, I had this magnificent injury happen to me, and it really just offset the the whole flow that you guys kind of see and focus now um, through our social media and and you know everything that we're doing and trying to connect with people. If that makes sense, yeah. So that, what was the first product then? If it wasn't that bar yeah, grip, was, that's what, what I was going to ask. So we did make some t-shirts before we had bar grip, um, but they were really just 
uh, shirts that I really wanted to wear, if that makes sense. So right. I thought the design was really cool. We put them together on a, on a T-shirt, gave them out to the people that were supporting us and that were really living the never stop the progress and demand greatness lifestyle uh, that we've always pushed for. And we just gave them out. And from there, you know, when we made our first prototype of Bar Grip, we uh, handed out a couple of shirts to people um, at the gym. And it was just crazy because I thought that this idea of Bar Grip was just going to be a silly shirt that maybe myself and a couple of loved ones or people that that uh, that I deal with on the day to day were going to want to wear. And as soon as we saw the first person, uh, you know, hit hit over a 500 pound squat in it and say, "Wow, I actually felt the difference." It it just told us that we were onto something right, and we knew that we just need to make the product better and connect with more customers to try to advance them in their uh, their training and anything we can help them with. That's awesome. I have a uh, I have my old guys buy those because uh, it's not really necessarily a performance thing although that's there. Um, but they get these sores in their backs. They get these r- rashes in their backs and they just won't heal up. These guys are 60, 70 years old sometimes, really. And uh, that shirt protects them. It's a piece of safety gear for a lot of my guys. It's a, it's a big deal. So Christmas is coming. What do these people that are listening to this show need to do? Yeah. So we, uh, we actually uh, just got done with our, our Black Friday sale. Um, but we, with that sale, we actually launched some really cool, amazing new products um, that really help with the innovation effect that we're always on to. One of the biggest products that we launched uh, that we've actually been in prototyping and designing for about the last 14, 16 months is uh, what we call our U-Bag. And uh, this is a bag that we designed specifically for lifters, people who are you know having to carry around their belt, their knee sleeves, their shoes, um, as well as, you know, take their stuff that they need for work with them, like their laptop and, and things like this. And uh, we've really designed a bag from the complete ground up where it started with sketches and then we did a prototype and we didn't like this and we liked that. And uh, all that to say, we've we finalized it. We launched it to the community. Um, it's a really great bag that has uh, some key features of it are like 500 denier nylon. So this is really, really strong, uh, supportive exterior in it. It has a triple stitch reinforcement. It has expansion pack to it. So even when your bag's at its max capacity, you need a little bit of extra room and it's a three inch expansion zipper in it to give you some more room in the core of the duffel. Um, but I think the biggest reason that people are gravitating to this bag outside of the high quality that I kind of mentioned, um, even where we used metal YKK zippers, is we've, we've come up with a really great uh, system for the belt to loop both vertically as well as horizontally which in theory, you can even take two belts with you. So if you use a different belt for squats compared to deadlifts, like I know a lot of lifters prefer to do, um, they can go ahead and fit both of these belts in the bag and still have full access to their bag. With our vertical drop through for the belt, you can actually still open the clamshell layout of the bag. You can still open up the back of the bag where we actually have a a separate sleeve uh, from the bag designed for your laptop to slide in as well as a tablet. Um, And these all hold up to the the current size, including the 16 inch, uh, um, new uh, Apple computer that just came out. So we've really tried to put our attention to detail on this. We've lined it with ripstop nylon. So if you do get a little scratch in it, it's not going to destroy and unravel the whole bag. So uh, all that to say, that's probably the, the biggest item that we've launched for this Black Friday that we've been the most excited about. But we've also launched a whole bunch of uh, really cool uh, new designs for our shirts, um, really just tried to provide what the customers have always given for their feedback. I'm looking at this bag now. People that have listened to the podcast know I'm a huge fan of of e bags. I actually the bag that I take to the gym now is a is an e bag mother load, um, but this bag looks badass, dude. <laughs> and um, the the problem with bags for I travel all the time is that when you try to put a belt in a bag and you try to carry it on, especially if it's got a lever on it, you're guaranteed. To have a TSA agent uh, put a rubber glove on and do a body cavity search. It's amazing. And so um, I love the fact that you've got the option to, to sort of have the buckle exposed outside the bag so that they can see exactly what it is. For those of you that travel, um, I'm going to have to get me one of these bags. It actually looks, it looks pretty cool. Send them. Ooh, I like that. They said it on, they said it on camera. Oh. Just send me a bag. There we go. <laughs> and I'll do a review. So no, these, I, I'm a, I'm a huge bag nerd. So I, I have, I bet I've got 12 backpacks and almost all of them are from e-bags. I'm, a, I'm an e-bags guy. I've got all different sizes because I travel, you know, I'll travel for a two day trip or a four day trip or a seven day trip or whatever. And I actually just, I, I just joined a gym for the first time in like 20 years since I've owned gyms and have a nice home gym. And so I was like, I actually, for the first time in a long time, I had to like pack a gym bag to take to the actual gym instead of just have all my stuff in my 
home gym that I have now. And I was thinking like this, this is this bag that I have is pretty good for like bringing clothes and and laptops and stuff, but it, it's not great for like Olympic weightlifting shoes and belts. And so um, this bag, yeah. So it's called the U bag at A7. By the way, your website is a7.co, right? And you guys are really like international. You got a you got A7 all over the place. So you're you're an American owned company, is that right? I want to make sure I get this right. But you are all over the place. Yeah, definitely. We actually just signed, I think, our ninth distribution zone. So in the coming uh, the coming launch, we'll actually have uh, Russia joining up for the next launch, and then we have uh, we just signed a contract with mainland China a couple of days ago. So we'll have China, mainland China, take off as well. Um, and we've got a couple other uh, points to try to help. Small group of people, you got to meet the needs there. Yeah, a lot of people we so. got to meet, and we're, we've got a couple other talks to try to help uh, get the gear to the lifters quicker. You know, because I know that's probably the biggest hurdle. Uh, when we're looking at powerlifting, it's just trying to make sure you have it available, you know? Yeah, I was going to ask, so um, what is the typical turnaround time? So, you know, most of our, we certainly have some international lifters, especially Western Europe, um, Australia, some groups like that. But mo- most of our listeners are going to be are going to be U.S. Uh, people. What typical turnaround is, my experience has been pretty fast. Are you guys still in, uh, you know, going into Christmas how late can you order? Uh, you told me before we turned on the recording, you actually have several of your employees right now, like in the warehouse, like stuff and things in boxes and send them out. What is, uh, you have sort of a, an end date, like if they get an order in by December 15th or something that you can, you'll have it there by Christmas. Do you guys, have you guys said It'll that? It'll all depend um, on really which zone they're in. So, you know, since in the US, we still ship internationally and everything. Sure. If they're outside of the States and everything, it's going to be a little bit trickier to kind of, of get course. Keep there. Um, but I always just tell people, you know, play it safe, try to plan 10 days before the holiday. Um, sure. we actually shut down our website right before, uh, when we do the cutoff and everything. So you'll probably yep, see yep. the website shut down around that time, um, for at least the domestic orders. So, uh, we really try to help customers out throughout that whole process. Um, so I don't, I don't really have an exact answer, but we will ship them out, uh, to give you an idea. Uh, we had the whole team there until around six o'clock in the morning on, um, uh, six o'clock Saturday morning from finishing our order After packing Black Friday. on Friday. Uh-huh. So we are all very dedicated. We, we try not to look at the package as if it's just another package going out. Every customer gets a handwritten note. Every customer gets a little candy in their bag when we're shipping domestically and they don't get interfered by customs. Um, and we really just try to go the extra mile for the customers to make sure that we're treating it like it's going to our mother or our father um, or our best friend. And it's not just a package that's going out the door uh, uncared for. You guys know, have you ever heard of um, Pappy Van Winkle? whiskey yeah yes. absolutely, absolutely. Right, so so you guys are actually really similar to to like the pappy van winkle of fitness <laughs> right and, and what i mean by that is like it's very high quality it's very high quality uh it's l- low in supply and high in demand and and you do a great job of actually even playing to that like you guys will shut your website down You're like nope can't buy our stuff right now and everybody's like, when, when's it, when's the launch coming? When's it coming? And then you, you're able to use that. And, you know, Pappy's the same way. So they're like, hey, man, we don't have very many every year. And it's coming out and demand is incredibly high and supply is pretty low. Um, as a matter of fact, if there's if there's any complaint about your business, it's that there are lots of times where I'm like, damn it, I wanted that shirt and it's sold out so fast I didn't get it, you know? Um, and so, but that's that means you're doing it right. You've, you've, uh, You've created a tremendous amount of demand uh, for the product, and it's because the product's great, right? Uh, we are looking at a future partnership with uh, Barbell Logic, having a Barbell Logic A7 Bar Grip shirt uh, personalized with the uh, with the Barbell Logic logo on the back. Um, and so, keep your eyes open for that in the future. But until that thing is out, and I don't even know if I'm going to offer that to the public. I'll be honest with you. I'm probably just I might just offer it to the clients. Well, here's what I'll tell you: I'm yeah. going to offer it to the clients and the staff first. And if it sells out from the clients and the staff, then it's never going on the website. Right. So, you know, we, we want to constantly, it, again, it comes back to people. I want to reward our people so that people who have invested in us, we want to invest back in them. And so, but I already own five of these shirts. Plus, I own a bunch of other cool shit, too. Like, you get good shorts and all kinds of fun stuff. But um, so get on the website. Go to a7.co. Uh, you guys have, it's, your stuff is really fashionable, too. Like, it fits well. The shirts fit well. You can uh, tell my wife Matt has Reynolds several is really pieces. into being fashionable. Look at him. Look at that <laughs> I'm glad it's a podcast. I have a face for podcasting. So no, I mean, you know, it's like you guys have done a really good job of making the cuts. The you you know how lifters are built, so you know how to design your clothes to to fit lifters where you know it's tight where you want it tight. It's loose where you want it loose. It fits correctly. 
Um, so we love your products, man. You guys have done a great well, job. J- Jason and Tatiana, thanks for coming on the show and telling everybody about your business and a little bit of your story. Thanks so much. Thank you guys. We really appreciate it. Absolutely. See All you guys. Right. Let's answer some questions. What do you say? Anna, who is hey, Anna. female listener 24, she is 33 years old. Perfect. Five foot seven, 145. Yeah, sounds great. Not too bad. She says, I've only been able to pull 220 for a double for over a month at this point, and I'm wondering what I should do differently to be able to hit that number. My goal is a five rep max, and then be able to complete, continue uh, upping the att- intensity. Um, and she, she doesn't give us any information here about her. About her program, about her training, or training. But split. I think we could guess, like if we had a lady like her that was stalled pulling a double there, what would we have to do? I got theories. Yeah, let's hear them. She probably needs to pull more. Yeah, more frequency, more volume. Uh, she, I, I would guess, I would guess that she's probably just pulling twice a week. It doesn't say that, uh, but I'd have her pull right. three times a week and do a heavy light medium kind of thing. I might have her on a four day yeah. split, but I'd still have her pull three times a week. Right. Or, well, or if you have her on a four-day split, you also could have so much volume on that second piece that it's, it would be the same amount of volume as if you did heavy, light, medium yeah, so, three times a week, right? So the total amount of, like, kind of tonnage and volume would be the so same. So what what, under your plan, it would be, like, pull your big, heavy double, then squat. And then do two, and then, and then, well, back. And then two back-offs, okay. probably. And then on another day of, like, five sets of five on deadlifts. Five sets of five on deadlifts sucks. Buddy. Four sets of five, five sets of four. Whatever, but that's probably what she needs. I wouldn't have her do five sets of five. Well, I'm just saying a vol- like a volume type yeah. day. Uh, I like six doubles, seven doubles, eight doubles for those ladies. I like six sets of three. Dude, I've been doing six sets of yeah. three. I've been killing it. You're just going to have to do more, sister. That's the answer. Yep. I'll, I'll, I'll run somebody at six sets of three as long as I can, and then I'll drop the third rep and go to six mm-hmm. doubles. But I don't start with six doubles, right? I start with like the triples because they're not that heavy yet. And then when they start getting real heavy, I just pull that third rep. So, yeah, you're just going to have to yep. pull more. You're going to have to pull more. The intensity guys who always say to increase intensity say you got to pull more. It's actually true. At some point, you can't keep putting weight on the bar until you do some more work. Just got to do more. Sorry. Sorry. That's and it. so, of course, your volume days are going to be lighter, of course. Um, dudes... I would have their volume work maybe 70 to 80 percent of their five rep. Uh, sure, but hers but is going to be higher but, than but that. But females and older people would be probably more like in that 85, 90 percent area. That's what I was going to say 90, 88 to yeah. 90. Yeah, good luck. You'll be fine. Just keep working, stay with it, don't get frustrated. It will come. Francisco says um, when we talk about programming, he gets so confused. <laughs> that means we're not doing a good job. <laughs> Sorry, man. No. Uh, and he says, what books do you recommend for a novice uh, to read about programming? Because uh, they want to understand the theory and the nuts and bolts of the programming. <sighs> uh, there isn't one. Sorry, man. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, the theory and practical yeah. programming is pretty good. Chapter two of practical programming is golden. So good. Yep. I agree. Chapter three ain't bad either. Um, no, it's I, the, the beginning. The theory that's laid out there is pretty is pretty solid. Um, how to apply that theory, and then to be able to take that theory to the next level and say, well, this is why we make minimum effective dose changes. Why do we do three sets of five in the beginning for linear progression? Like why linear progression, or why is linear progression linear with intensity increases as opposed to volume increase or something like? All those are questions that should be answered and aren't necessarily answered and need to be answered in a future minimum effective dose book written by Scott. Uh, So Andrew says, hi guys, love your show. You talked about two groups. No, he says you talk a lot about two groups, the underweight 18 year old kid who should go mad and the 40 plus age man looking to get healthy. He says, what amount of food is necessary for a 30 year old? (laughs) Right, I don't know. Who's overweight or underweight or the right yeah. weight? No, he doesn't say. He doesn't even say? For just a 30-year-old yeah, He says, I don't feel like man? I need as much as the young kid, but I don't fit in the older category. You probably actually do fit in the older category or at least closer to it than you suspect. Oh, he's 30. 
He's 30. Oh, Don't crush his dream shit. He's fine. 30 years old, man. You're Listen, at 30, you're closer to the young man than you are the old man. Yep. Now, for a few and, more years. And then it falls off the cliff. And then you're not. I'm no dietitian or nutritionist, but I would say you may be overthinking it. Make sure you get 200 grams of protein every day and uh, put a tape around your navel uh, once a week. And as long as the weight is going up on the barbell and the tape is not, uh, you're not having to let out more tape, then I would say your, your diet is just fine. If the weight on the barbell stalls and the tape, you're not letting out tape, eat more. If the weight on the barbell is going up, but you're letting out the tape, you can probably trim back a little bit. There is an iterative iterative process we have to go through. We got to figure it out. And we figure it out by looking at the scale, looking at the weight on the barbell and looking at how big around your belly is. You'll figure it out. There you go. Uh, Lucas (laughs) says, great show, guys. I always enjoy listening. In a few weeks, I'm having a vasectomy. No. All right, next pocket. Next one. Wait, but wait, what if, the, but is the next sentence, I already have eight no, children? He because if it is, that's okay. Welcome. Their fourth child in. And the doctor said, Four's all right. lay out uh, for three total weeks. He said, how much of a strength decrease can I expect after coming back from a three-week break? Any other lifting tips specific to men coming back from a vasectomy? Hey, listen, I've got some lifting tips for people coming back from a vasectomy. Don't do a darn thing for three weeks. Like I know so many guys that like, oh, it's a, I'm in, I'm in day 15. I feel pretty good. And they mow the yard and then they have really bad swelling. Uh, like you really need to, you yeah. need to lay on your back. Everything and turns ice. black. And then, yeah. you, and, then, and then your thighs turn purple and, uh, like, you know, under your knees. Doctor's orders for yeah. sure. As far as yeah. how much of a strength decrease, I don't know. You probably back off 15% and run back up. Yeah. That's what I was going to say. 15% come back with a little lower volume that hit that one set of five and the two sets yeah. of five and then three sets of five and you're off and running. You'll be back where you were in like two weeks. Yeah, about you'll be fine. Six or seven workouts. And, and your, your strength won't you're decrease you 15%. Were. We're just going to back you off that much so you don't get really sore. You, you'll be just fine. Yeah, but, right. Know, doctor's orders, man. Uh, yeah. A lot of the times those guys are way too conservative, but on the vasectomy thing, the swelling uh, can cause real problems. Yeah, yeah, we've had several clients that are it's been an issue. And I don't like pictures. I don't like getting, having to get those. You don't? Nah. I've, I've had some pictures over the last few years from some of my clients. It's like a cat brain. goes bad. It's not really what I want to see. <laughs> That's oh, it ain't right. good. Josh sends us one here. Uh, he says, you guys have revolutionized the programming world through this podcast by expanding the conversation around programming and convincing many people to start lifting with intention. Well, thank you. He says... Um, what are the uh, what are the programming differences between the traditional versus the four day split Texas method? Specifically, how does the four day split make up for not having a Wednesday light day? We've we've talked about this before. When you move from a three day full body program to a four day split, you are pulling some of the stress off of the squat and the deadlift, and you are applying it to the upper body to the bench press and the press, right? So rather than squatting and deadlifting three times a week or six times total between the two, you're now going to four. And rather than benching and pressing only 1.5 times each or three times total, you're going to four, right? So now it's four and four. So it's, it's even. Yep. That's it. That's what you're doing. And, and you need to do that because at some point in our experience with the vast majority of people, although not everyone, but with the vast majority of people, uh, at some point, it's too stressful to squat and deadlift three times a week. And it's not stressful enough to bench and press yep. only 1.5 times per week. And so when you get to that point, the most natural thing to do is to take away a squat and a, and a deadlift and add a bench and a press. And then lo and behold, later on, you do need to squat three times a week again. Yeah, and then uh, right, and then you'll go back. That's exactly right. Then at some point, you'll actually go back know, to three times a week. You know, we have, uh, we have debated offline a whole lot more than online about what is the utility of the light day squat in the Texas method as written. We right. have, we've, and, and man, I'm telling you, I just, I'm not sure what the utility of the darn thing is. Uh, maybe it's practice. Maybe it is some training stress. I, I don't really know, but uh, one of your specific questions is how do you make up for not having the Wednesday light day? And I think for the person who is actually a, new intermediate. Um, I don't think not having a white light day needs to be made up for. Right. That's, like that's my stance. Like I just don't think you need it by that point. Sure. 
I just moved a guy. I got a guy that's... Um, Do you agree a, with that? A, Do you think it's a waste of time? I don't think it's a waste of time all the time. So I, I was just about to say, like, I've got a guy right now who... Um, doctor from Northwest Arkansas. Uh, he's in his late 50s, six foot tall, about 220 pound guy. Is in good shape, looks fitnessy, looks lean, looks relatively muscular. You know what I yep. mean? He's just got that, like, like he's, you know... He's the kind of guy, if you're like, hey, I'm I'm pushing 60, I want to look like that guy, right? Uh, GP, general, general practitioner in Northwest Arkansas. And uh, I've been coaching him, and he is, I literally, today is his very first light squat mm -hmm. day. What do you, do you want to guess what he squatted on Monday? Well, you've been talking this gentleman up. I'm going to say 315. 395 for three sets of five. Fuck that guy. His light squat day is 315 for three sets of five. That's today. ridiculous. Isn't that ridiculous? That is ridiculous. So here's the thing. I think he needs, and this is what's crazy, is the guy is like still green. He's squatting three sets of five at 395 at 57 years old. And not, 220. The, and not that big. No, six, he's six foot tall and 220. Like he's just a, he's just a athletic looking dude. Yeah, I was like, and I don't want to butter him up too much because I don't want him to know how good it is. So... He's probably going to hear this. I hope he doesn't. But uh, yeah, so so I like a light day for him right now because I think he still needs to practice on the squat. The guy's like actually he's gotten strong. Like I've had him for about two months now. So about two months in, and uh, I'm I'm looking to see what our first day. Yeah, but it's still it was actually for this October guy. October thirtieth was my very first was his very first workout. So October thirtieth, and now here it is. It's December fourth. Today, so it's almost been almost exactly two months. He came to the barbell prescription seminar with Sully. I had to meet him in person, and um, and because he's relatively close. So yeah, so I like the light squat day with this guy because he's only squatted for like eight weeks. Yeah, he's still not an intermediate though. That's the difference between your gentleman. No, and this he's guy. not. He's not. He's really not an intermediate. And so I'll probably if if just for practical purposes here for our listeners, he's probably gonna do another four to six weeks of this. Sort of heavy, light, heavy. Um, that's my guess. Yeah. I mean, he, he's that, the three sets of five at three ninety five was not an absolute grinder. I was just like, ah, the guy's pushing sixty. Let's just not. So he's going to squat. Let's not four fifty. Let's not grind into powder for his last day or squat something four, like that. Yeah, four four fifteen four twenty for three sets of five. Gosh. Here in a few weeks, and then we'll and then we'll switch into a four day split. What's his body weight? And that's been what doing? I would do. It. Has he been gaining weight? You know, I need to ask him. Um, I don't. I mean, he. He, I bet he isn't. I bet he's just he, like getting more and more jacked and just like yeah, better just, looking. Just turning, he just like granite. Um, he, he's probably gained a little bit, but he doesn't look any. He definitely doesn't look any fatter. Well, that's remarkable. Uh, but my guess is he's he's got a little more density. So yeah, the Lord has mysterious ways, Matt Reynolds. I know, right? I know. It's, people are going to be like, "What? This sixty-year-old guy squatting three sets of And it, you're not sixty. I know you're not quite sixty. You're close to sixty, though. You're pushing sixty. Oh gosh, uh, Charity, seven years old. Charity has a, a lady client who's thirty-two years old. I don't know. I don't know what she weighs. She's five eight. She's not a small person, but um, yeah. LP deadlift three ten for five. That's crazy. <laughs> Isn't that crazy? Strong. You know, uh, I think her I think her uh, press LP ended at like 110, 110 105. Like her press right. is going to be right. crazy too. The, those numbers are almost as crazy for a lady at the end of LP as this gentleman's squat is, I think. Yeah, sure. Crazy. Sure. And how old is she? 32. Okay. So, yeah, she's, she, I mean, she's still young. Yeah. But yeah, people, people. I think people overthink the light, the light day too much, right? Yeah. In the beginning, you're putting the light day in there because I think it's for practice, and I think that they're not ready to. They don't want to train four days a week. Sometimes it's just that, right? It's three days a week. So if it's three days a week, then that light day works better than a, than a like a four day split over three days a week. I don't like that as much. I, I've got another question here. Okay. Yeah, I'm not Last even going to give the guy's first name. Okay, Matt and Scott, thank you for the podcast, all of it. I've listened to every episode from the beginning. He says, I've been following the method for a while, and I'm having trouble programming for myself as an early intermediate. I am 33 years old, 5'9", 230. Life stress is very high as a baseline, as I am a police officer in a large city. I have a three-year-old, and I'm taking seminary classes and serve at my local church congregation outside of work 
I also am diagnosed with chronic fatigue syndrome. I don't even know what that last thing is, but okay. You're depressed, dude. You don't have chronic fatigue. You're depressed. I'll just go ahead right. and just diagnose it right now. <laughs> right. I mean, chronic fatigue, yeah. I mean, and I'm not trying to be ugly. Chronic fatigue is kind of like the, uh, oh, what's the garbage pail diagnosis that you hate? Fibromyalgia. Fibromyalgia, yeah. I, I, I think I have known people that have gotten that diagnosis, and uh, I think universally those people are depressed. Yeah. And giving them that diagnosis is not helpful to them because if they actually right. put if they pinned the tail on the donkey and said, "Hey man, this is actually, you know, clinical depression." Well, now you've got something you can work on. If it's just chronic fatigue, you're just like, "Well, I'm just going to be tired for the rest of my days. I'm chronically yeah. fatigued." Yeah, I've and we're not doctors and we're not no we're not psychiatrist. Um uh, and I'm not and I've, never, and, I, and I've never had I've never had long-term systemic fatigue or systemic depression have you have you ever had you ever been depressed for a period of like a long period of time yeah it, since 74 <laughs> yeah, <but. laughs> i'd like look out the window and i just get so fucking sad since, uh, uh you know but i've been i've been i've had short periods of acute depression like sure four five ten days whatever uh and one of the very first things you'll notice is that you you can't sleep enough you have no ambition you're tired all the time it's a super common uh, trait characteristic of of depression, and that's that's our experience. Again, we're not we're not doctors, but you're you're probably onto something there. Yeah, I'm cert- I certainly certainly of course I could possibly be wrong, and I'm not trying to do so on you here, man. Yeah, Con- consider that maybe it could be depression, and maybe go to someone who specializes in that and see if they see what they think. Because I think it would be very useful to you if you could, if you di- if you do have depression, if you could move away from that diagnosis and just accept that it's depression. Now, now, you know, you would have a. I hate this term. I'll say it anyway. A path forward. Yeah. You, so you could, I've you never. Could treat it. I, and I'm sure somebody's. We're going to write in and get hate mail on this, but like one yeah. of my things with this sort of chronic fatigue or like a fibromyalgia type thing, like I, I don't, I don't think it's. Um, we were talking earlier about like authenticity. I think people really believe they have it, right? I think they believe mm-hmm. they really feel Something's pain wrong. and they really and they really feel fatigue. Like so, it's not that I think that it's all, um, you know, I don't know how much of it's psychosomatic, but it's it's they feel something physically. There is a physical feeling that, mm-hmm. that they get. But the interesting thing about it is, is is if you think about um, like like professional athletes, sometimes professional athletes get cancer and die. Mm-hmm. Uh, but but Olympic athletes, professional athletes, never get fibromyalgia or chronic fatigue syndrome and stop. You know what I mean? Like now, that's right. weird. Have you thought about that? Yeah. Like some, like some, like all of the other diseases that are out there, like a, like cancer, Lou right? Gehrig's disease, Lou Gehrig, like <laughs> Parkinson's, whatever. Right. Like athletes get that all the time. Just, yeah. uh, as a matter of fact, they get it as often as the rest of the population does. Mm-hmm. And yet, n- never do you hear of Usain Bolt. Listen, he just can't perform this year in the Olympics because he's got that fibromyalgia. He's got or Epstein as the, Barr as, virus, or, right? Or as the as the uh, is that where somebody kills you? <laughs> no, is that <laughs> yeah? That's when uh, uh, Attorney General Barr uh, died you. Um, the, the the you know that uh, fibromyalgia. Yeah, I think most of those people have profound trauma histories. And that, that might be true. Yeah, I I, I see a lot of people who have fallen into the I recognize that I cannot contribute to society I have uh, lingering pain and I'm now on opiates for the rest of my life because I have fibromyalgia like and so I sit at home and watch like soap operas all day and Netflix and and well, there's depression I, I there, don't even you know? know how many of and they're just depressed I don't know how many of those people are, are guaranteed to have trauma sometimes I just think it's a do you think you hit a point in life sometimes at 40 years old or whatever it is where you're just like, mm, I'm not contributing to society at all. I have a, I have no job or a dead end job or I hate my job and my my marriage sucks and my kids don't like yep. me. And oh, my God, everything hurts. You're goddamn right. Everything hurts. You're depressed because your life sucks. The suicide rates, you know, for for just middle-aged white guys are just going up, up, up. They're just disaffected. Yeah. Like it seems pointless, you know, to go on is just right. too much. Um, they haven't been able to 
realize their dreams or even approximate it, you yeah. know, and, and, uh, you know, some profound depression and hurt out there, you know? And so I can imagine sure. if you, if, yeah, I, I, and I, I want to be very careful to talk about this stuff. Cause I like, l- listen, I, I have literally his, the thought has never crossed my mind ever in the worst of like acute depression that I had never has the thought crossed my mind that I would, Oh, I'm the last one to go kill another person. Oh, I think about that all the time. (laughs) I mean, like, you know, I can, I can actually remember it. You know, my, my dad, um, who's still in hospice, I get, thank you guys for asking. So he's still in hospice. He's actually done a little bit better the last few months. Never thought he'd make it through the, through this year. Um, he was wired. He was kind of a melancholy, depressive sort of guy. And, um, I can remember I'm the oldest. And so, um, so he, you know, he had to learn a lot of parenting with me. Then, then he was able to probably refine some of that for my younger brother and sister. And I can remember when we would get in some big fights when I was like 14, 15 years old, not like physical fights, but just big, like massive arguments. And my dad was always a super wonderful guy. was always, uh, just really nice and, and was emotive and after, you know, an hour or so after a fight or 45 minutes after a fight, he would come in my room and he would make sure he's like, hey, do you, are you okay? You know, do you know that I love you? And, um, and he would, um, he would like allude to, now you're not going to do anything. Mm. You're not going to hurt yourself or anything, right? And I'm like, dad, you're confused. Right. You better not sleep, old man. <laughs> yeah, it was that. I mean, really, that, that was what I was thinking. I was like, bro, I don't have any yeah. problem with me. I'm good. I'm gonna kill you. I'm not gonna kill me. <laughs> so so I, I say all that. I make this funny, but like I, I want to be very careful because I know this is a real serious topic, and I I cannot sympathize with it. It's, that thought has never come yeah, into my I head. I like yeah, me. I don't understand it. I'm not gonna kill me, and I've also never had fibromyalgia. So. Back back to poor Andrew here. Uh, he he says he's having he's having programming uh, difficulties, and he's trying to you know in, in trying to make uh, progress. Uh, and then he asked, um, he asked, is it possible um, that it might be testosterone as well? Man, I think it could be all those things. I, I think the chronic fatigue yeah. syndrome, the diagnosis, I think it's, that can be a little catch-all. Uh, if I were you, I wouldn't be satisfied leaving my diagnosis there. I th- go go, go look right. into the hormones. Go look into the the possibility of depression. What do you have to lose? Yeah, right? it's cheap. Like, what you, do you have to lose? You know, you're, you're a police officer. You probably got good health insurance. You know, let's go. Let's go. Uh, dig into a few of those things. Go to a good urologist. Uh, go to a mental health professional. Go check it out, man. Uh, I hope you. Uh, I hope everything turns around and, and uh, start feeling better, brother. Really, I do. Yeah. By the way, if you're listening to this, like we'd love to, like go get some of that stuff checked out and let us know. Yeah. All right. We'll 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 protect your privacy there. Uh, thank you for thank you for being honest and vulnerable about it. So hopefully this didn't piss you off that we that we steered you in this direction. So, but you probably need to go get some help, and it might need to be, and it it might be physiological might look like you literally might just have a have a, a hormone issue you might have a chemical How imbalance awesome you, would might, that you know be? And, oh, your testosterone nine great. like oh shit you're done <laughs> that's right that's right <laughs> that'd be the best you're answer done. ever perfect in three weeks you'll be awesome that's true yeah oh yeah. shoot yeah yeah get some help brother and until then like make training fun that's what i that's what i would say with a guy like this like hey don't put too much pressure on yourself when you feel this way to go out and hit prs all the time like, like, still mm-hmm. train. So when I say make training fun, I'm not saying like go out and just exercise and like play around on a treadmill. I'm, I'm like, just go lift and just have fun. Just go have fun. Like, if it's there for the taking, take a PR. If it's not there, then just go hit some reps and go have fun because you'll feel better at the end. But if you put this pressure on yourself that all you have to do is you have to chase numbers all the time, that gets old. Nobody does that all the time, yep. right? Like e- even super competitive lifters. Don't chase numbers 12 months out of the year. Matt, I'm only going to chase them once a year now. I'm going to run up once a year. Yeah. It, yeah. It's just That's too much. Fun. It's too heavy. And I'm, I'm not sure how much good I do if I chase it 12 months a year. Sure. Right. So you, right. So you spend, so you spend, you know, eight months out of the year, just like being real healthy, moving, enjoying training. Yeah, don't have to push real hard. I'm and then still you moving. Three, three, I'm, yeah, you're still strong. Moving some decent weight. You know, I pulled 480 yesterday pretty fast. Nice. And uh, then did some back offs. But, you know, I didn't do five. <laughs> I didn't do that five fives at 430, you know. Sure. You know, uh, yeah. So, yeah. Be easy on yourself, man. Go check it out. Uh, there's another question and answer episode. 
We got it yeah. all in there on that one, didn't we? Yeah. Go check out our friends at a7.co. A7.co. And uh, go get a go get one of their shirts uh, for uh, somebody in your life that uh, your training partner maybe. It's a good Christmas Bar present. shirt. I hope to get that backpack too. I love that backpack. It looks awesome. You've got actually. enough backpacks, Matt. I know. I have a problem with backpacks. You, you, get a, you get a. You're like a bag lady. What if I sold some of the backpacks I currently have and just replace and replaced it with this one? I, I, I approve of that. Or I could just give them. I, I like. I think my backpacks will make good gifts. There's another question and answer episode. Please send in your questions to questions at barbell-logic.com. Hey, and if we've answered one of your questions in the past uh, and you followed up on uh, on uh, your problem with our advice, let us know how that went. Like yeah, even if we cool. were 100% wrong uh, yeah. or whatever, let us know. I'd love to uh, I'd love to get some more field reports from you guys. We'll, uh, sure. we'll uh, read some of those on, on air. Th- thank you guys for listening. <laughs>